All right, as I promised, I'm back now and we will talk about another subject altogether instead of me complaining about people not running their nozzle checks and printing on their printers. I just received this today. I want to show you what it is. And keep in mind, I paid $13 with free shipping. This is why you should scour eBay almost daily. As you all know, I have two 3800. One of them is dead. It's going to require a new main board. So that's basically the heart of the printer, of the motherboard, like on a computer. An Epson T5806. It is light magenta, which I go through like there's no tomorrow. $13. Look on eBay, folks. If you have a 3800, 3880, you can find these, okay? Usually they go, there's a company called Selink Toner, and I will leave a link at the end of the video, that usually has uh, these going from, I think matte black carts run for about $23, sometimes $19, and the other colors will appear per periodically for $29.95 uh, free shipping. So this is wonderful. As you can see back here, maybe you can see, but I have a ton of carts. All of them brand new and all of them the real deal. Okay, so now as you all know the Pro 100 uses dye ink and it's wonderful for color and luster and satin and your Burrita papers. But everyone was asking about whether it can print on matte media. And it's a dye printer so you know people think that you need pigment black. Especially on a pigment printer you have to use your, your matte black which is a very, very denser version of the photo black, which seems to be a little bit more transparent in nature. And I don't know whether there's physically any differences in the actual pigment or the particles of the pigment, but as you all know, if you've been washing some syringes that you had some matte black ink, they tend to leave a lot of residue on your sink. And that's due to the, the higher density maybe, maybe they're just uh, more pigment particles, I don't know what it is, but they leave a mess on my sink. But not so with dyes. I mean, you're only using your regular, your normal black. And on the Pro 100, you have your black ink, and then you have your gray and light gray, which is wonderful because it produces beautiful gradations in your prints. Now, this is a paper that I, I am using. It is, of course, the normal um, Canon Photo Paper Pro Premium Matte. And I got this on one of those special sales that Canon periodically has. So I got a whole stack of them here. So I finally decided to go ahead and try it. This is the very first time, yes, I know, hard to believe. First time that I actually tried matte paper on my Canon Pro 100. I've been just loving printing on Luster. Love it. I have a lot of uh, 13 by 19 boxes of it. Again, I bought um, all of that stuff on special buys. So now I am using... Precision Colors inks, and it is the new ink set that they just recently put out. Okay, they improved certain colors. Remember, we were having, and I say we because I feel like I'm part of this company. <laughs> I'm, I'm so close to Mike, and we're constantly back and forth, you know, contributing to each other in ideas and such. And although he's the man, he's the man that controls the company, he's the man that does all the work. I'm just, you know, outs outsider looking in. But uh, I do have a close relationship with him. Anyway, uh, we were discussing the problem with the magenta ink that we were having. And I say we because I was one of the ones that had it. And this had to do with the biocide or, or the uh, antibacterial agent that they put in inks. Because inks, especially dye inks, are organic. So they have a, it's a great media for them to grow bacteria and fungi. And so they add this biocide to it to the mix and it's supposed to at least prevent you from growing anything harmful to your head or your your printer uh, with your constant inserting of needles and such in bottles and you know all of your refilling practices unless you have a sterile technique and you've worked in a lab and you know how to do that like I do um, you, you're going to probably contaminate your inks at one point or another so it depends on this the biocide to actually curb or or halt or totally prevent the germination of these bacteria and fungal spores mostly fungal spores that you will be injecting invariably injecting or inserting into your jar of inks inoculating I should say so 
one thing before I get into the subject of that, and I know I'm getting a little bit off subject here, but one thing that you can do is you get yourself one of these little bottles here, and I have a ton of them, and you immediately put the ink in them, and then you just refill like that. There's no washing, there's no, no nothing, no reinserting into the original bottle of ink. You're not constantly inoculating your original bottles of ink. And this is a great way to go. You can get these from most refilling companies, or you can just go to, what's the name of that place? Howard Electronics, online. Okay, so now, you get your inks in what volume? It depends on how much printing you do. If, you, if you're a constant printer, and you're putting out you know hundreds of prints a week, then yeah, you could probably get eight ounce bottles and, and just go through them within six months. If you do not plan to print that often, then eight ounces is really not the correct amount of ink to buy or the correct volume to buy, because you will not be able to use them within six months. And six months is about the time when things begin to happen. Okay, so that's my recommendation. So they were having bacterial growth or fungi growth in the magenta inks. And these bits of fungus or hyphae were actually getting trapped in the microscopic nozzles of the printer and the printers are thermal so this material was being literally burnt into the print head and it was causing magenta channels to just completely go bad and permanently permanently ruined you couldn't do anything none of the tricks would help so the only thing would be a new print head and if you're using the same inks you're going to repeat that process yet again so Precision Color, Mike Chen, went around, scoured the country looking for a, a, an alternate uh, source of inks and he found it and it is indeed wonderful. He retrofitted it to his normal ink set. In fact, uh, there's several colors that you need to buy that are different from the previous source. And all in all, story, all long story short, I should say, the inks are wonderful and practically match you know the original inks in other words you if you're not really picky you can use the same profiles from Canon or his profiles and so what I have done here I prepare a set of prints and this might be difficult to see on video but I visually there there is a difference now originally I did these two prints and it's just a print of my my little niece this is when she was a young lady many years ago now she's you know like senior in high school and this is the way it looks on my monitor and this is this is amazing this print looks identical to my monitor this is done with the new pc inks and of course this paper and the canon icc okay and there you go now i did a neutral black and white just to prove that i can print neutrally with that ink set in that particular icc profile and i look at it and it looks wonderful perfectly neutral not a bit of tint anywhere so you might say okay well I can just buy that set of inks and then use my uh, free ICC profile from Canon that's included in my driver and I'm good to go and yes you are now if you want to really extract the best out of that set of inks you need to get a hold of Mike Chen's ICC profiles and they are free on the website they come in I think D50 illumination, uh, tungsten, and fluorescent. So there's three ICC profiles for each paper for three different viewing conditions. Where else are you going to get that for free? I don't think so. Nowhere. All right, so this is my famous lemonade pitcher done with the Canon profile. This is my mess of roots three roots done with the ICC profile from Canon and perfectly neutral this is beautiful but enter Mike's regular simple D50 profile for this paper when you play some side to side you know, if I orient them the correct way you can see the difference this is this is precision colors profile this is Canon's profile right here all right the blacks are nowhere near as deep as they are here it's almost as if in the gamut the 3d gamut the bottom most 
part of the gamut is not even being touched by this profile okay especially with those inks so you want to extract the most contrast and the most shadow detail in deepness of the blacks you will have to use this profile as clear as can be and you know seeing is believing I don't know if you'll be I hope you can tell the, the difference I really do because it is there completely there okay so color wise I see no difference whatsoever everything is perfect but just the depth and richness of the blacks and this is like a dark gray oh if I don't show you this one you will accept this you would until I pop this one out and put it next to it then you say oh no get rid of this so here you go the difference here especially these areas here compared to this look at this this is black and it is supposed to be black on oh, my image is something like a point like a like a instead of zero it's like a three okay and I try to when I do my black point and white point I try I start I try to stay within two points from max okay I don't try to do a pure zero black or a 255 white I stay like 252 in about three for the black and again there there's no comparison it's just this looks good by itself until I show you this all right now let's look at the black and white so here's the black and white with the Canon profile looks great nothing no complaints until I show you this one until I show you this one I, I and I really do hope you can see the difference so there you go now for anyone that was asking whether you can print on matte paper using dyings everybody that I that you might that I have spoken to and you may have spoken to or read about will claim that dye inks don't work very well with matte papers that you must use a, a pigment printer such as the a 2400, 2880, any of, any of the K3 multi-black ink using type printers. And, well, there you go. You've seen the results that I just got just to, with the plain old a Pro 100 and Precision Color inks. And, of course, there are filters. All right. And, of course, there are ICC profiles. I said filters. <laughs> okay. All right. So I hope this answered a few of your questions. And go ahead and uh, take a look at the Canon website for some of these deals on paper. And if you happen to catch some of these deals, grab them because that paper works very well. It reminds me of Staples paper, which is awesome. The blacks on Staples paper, matte paper, uh, is just tremendous. And the contrast that you can get. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually experiment a little bit more on the Pro 100 and see what else I can how much more quality I can squeeze out of some of these and I'm going to go ahead and use some of my um, matte paper from Red River and see how that works but so far the Canon paper is performing beautifully all right okay so if you like this like please subscribe please share until the next time happy printing as always bye bye